second, which means I actually just go ahead and play some music in the background. And then it'll give us a little more time to chat once we are uh, actually in in the picks and bands. So we can talk about these as they're going on right now. Um, first of all, thank you everyone who's jumping in, watching, all that sort of stuff. Um, things have been a little bit nuts. I haven't quite uh, been able to get everything finished being finalized. This is actually okay because it gives me a little bit of time to send out the tweets and all that sort of good stuff. If you want to tweet out too, let people know in your circles or you know maybe even Facebook posts. Let them know in your circles that uh, there's a game going on. You could totally do that. You could totally do that. But we got ourselves Kendra, Zillion, Lucian, Vandaway, Vladimir, Zoe, Cassiopeia. Strong champions in their own right. The Zillion, the Kindred, not exactly S tier champions, but still strong. As uh, I don't know who us and them are, really. Uh, this Okay, so this here, here comes the guessing game, boys and girls. This is the guessing game. The link? Um, oh, that's actually true. We could do that. But no, this is more fun. we got to guess which team is which based upon picks, what we know about them. So we know that Applause is a pretty big Thresh player uh, in the bottom lane. She also likes Karma quite heavily. So if you see a Karma, we may be able to... I honestly think us, I think us is uh, Excellency. You think us Just because of the bands. Yeah, so I think... Because I know Demonius plays Zoe. Fair, fair. And Cassiopeia has been played a pretty heavy amount, too. Now, obviously, no... Yeah, and I know, I know Mike plays Sejuani, too. There we go. Like so it's looking like it's going to be Excellency on the blue side at the moment, as Cetra Gaming going to be on the red side. As uh, It's likely. We'll see as the fan picks continue to go through. We got some... Some Ice Queen sisters, Lissandra and Sejuani, picked up. All they got to do is grab the Ash to get the trifecta of those champions, but highly doubt that's going to come through. Either way, lots of CC. Pretty decent tank with that Sejuani. Needs to play aggressive. Pike, the oh, support. Pike. Not commonly seen. Yeah, only a few people uh, in pro play actually picked that champion up. Um, a very interesting champion for sure, but he does apply a lot of pressure bot lane. Into that Thresh can kind of put that pressure back onto the AD carry and force them into a, a tougher spot where Thresh doesn't want to try and fight that as often as he normally would. And the Jinx pick up before the second bench phase. There we go. So Jinx going to grab. So it's ADC on one side locked in and support on the other. Jinx, one of the uh, growing and more picked champions due to her versatility with the late game scaling that she has she kind of can become a hyper carry if she's gotten pretty good gold underneath her belt on top of that she can be both that range champion poking away if you're trying to just harass on the enemy say they're inside the baron pit or you can switch over to the gatling gun pow pow to knock some health off of people if you're in a bit more closer range that versatility pretty uh, enjoyable um, if you have the right composition for it because you do have to kind of protect the hyper carry if that's the composition you're rolling and with a the thresh they should be able to do that rex a bit more aggressive as they're going to ban away the kaisa and the sivir knocking down those adcs making sure to pinch the pool of what seems to be hurricanes and i think you're right because those are oh, they're red hurricanes enjoys no, right? You're the red? They're All right. Red. <laughs> hey, I called the the Thresh to applause, most likely. So Hurricanes is going to be playing Jinx. And that means Mike Ox Brawlman is going to be the Rek side. Champion we haven't seen him play before, but is premier jungler at the moment. So this is going to be a pretty interesting game to see him on that Rek side. Yeah, and they picking up Jax. Well, in that case, I was going to say I like the, the, the picks before the first ban phase from... Excellency, but it wasn't Excellency, it was uh, Cetra. But I like the Asana, Sejuani, Pike. So here you you know two of the roles. Uh, the Sejuani and Pike, unless they play Sejuani top lane. But the Lissandra can be flexed both mid and top. Now, obviously, it won't be flexed because it's the last two picks. We see what's coming out. But before that ban phase, it makes it kind of hard for Excellency to know it's a ban. Yeah, as they see them ban AD carries, because that was, that was one of the roles that they hadn't picked up at that point, which is going to be their last pickup here would be an AD carry, unless they're playing this hotter ballet or something weird. But um, you pinch, try and pinch that one AD carry pool because you don't know if this Lundra is actually going to be top lane or mid lane. And then also leaves up on your side, you have that counter pick left. They decided to opt for the mid lane counter pick um, as LeBlanc and Ezreal come out, which are two strong champions. They're fairly heavy on AP currently from the side of Cetra. But there aren't really any big beef boys um, for Excellency. Jax can get some magic this year and might be a problem if he does get ahead. 
and the Ori pickup to close it out. There we'll see go. if that plays out into the block, um, but they have a good team fight set up for sure. Yeah, it's strong stuff. I think both teams have some pretty good opportunities for engagement. The one side from Excellency they're lacking a little bit is a guaranteed strong tank front line, but they're going for a bit more skirmish. You've, you've got the split push of the Jacks. Rek'Sai is also pretty good at picking people off. Uh, Oriana strong AP, Jinx strong AD, Thresh good, disengage. So they overall have a decent composition. The key now is going to be playing to their strengths, not getting poked out by that Ezreal or LeBlanc, and playing to kind of a 1-3-1, one, one, if you will, um, and letting that Jax just become huge on the sidelines. I think if the Jax is head, they definitely look for that. I don't know, they probably end up opt for a 4-1, unless the Rek'Sai is also... Uh, able to 1v1 people at that point but um yeah for the side of set setra they're just looking to engage with the strong uh cc that they have and follow up with that leblanc massive damage the israel damage to poke people down take people out and all that excellency from is wanting to do here if they get caught in a team fight is to peel back using that thresh uh, the Rex side, the range of Jinx and the Oriana Shockwave can definitely help with that those rockets to get a lot of damage down onto uh, these the big front. Uh, it's not really a big front line, but the Sejuani and the Lissandra before they can get their crowd control down onto the right targets. Um, and if they can stay alive to pass the initial uh, damage from Lissandra and Sejuani, followed up by LeBlanc and Ezreal, if they can get there. Uh, if they can stay alive past that, they'll be in a very good spot, especially if they're towards the later stages of the game when Jinx and Jax just start mowing through everybody <laughs> as they're those late game hyper, uh, hyperscale champions, hyper carries. All right, we should be getting into the true picks and bans here just shortly. Uh, looked like a player needed to go for just a moment before uh, coming back, and so... It won't be long, which will give us a little more time to analyze their compositions as well as to get a better feel for where the game as a whole is going to be going. I think it's going to come down to which team plays their strengths. I know the game right now currently is very snowball heavy, um, which you can kind of see that a lot about most comps. If one of these two teams gets ahead and on one of their main carries, this LeBlanc gets ahead, the Ezreal can get ahead. Uh, or the, on the other side, the Jax and Jinx both scale extremely well. Um, so if Jax gets a lead on this Lissandra, it gets some magic resist. There's really nothing Lissandra can do in that lane without backup. Um, and it can make it really hard to kill Jax when a lot of your damage on this team is AP. Ez Ezreal for sure has been opting for more of an AP route towards the late game where you get that double tier build plus the uh, Hextech Gunblade. So you get a lot of AP towards the end of the game. And all Jax really has to do is build some magic resist, and then LeBlanc, Ezreal, and Lissandra can't really do much. Um, Ezreal will still have 80 damage, obviously, but it's going to be tough for them to deal with this Jax if he does get ahead into that side lane. Splitting, I don't really see anybody that can match him in that 1v1, so they'll have to force the team fight and hope that Jax doesn't take their entire base. Yeah, and that's exactly what you're talking about. With that counter strike, he's going to be able to avoid a lot of damage, AD damage, from the Ezreal or the Pike should they get on him as we are going to go ahead and switch to our in-game scene. Ladies and gentlemen, game number one. Welcome to Excellency Shoutcasting. Excited to get this game underway and to see what's going on you with this one. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, we are going to have a pretty interesting uh, game number two. that are going to be coming out from a Focus you don't Esports. Uh, it's sending us two teams to kind of play against each other in a best of one scrim. Um, for game number two. So we will be able to get a chance to kind of watch them, give them a chance on the, the big, if you will, Excellency stage. Uh, and then we'll be into more Excellency teams for game number three and game number four as well. No, we're no surprises here when it comes to the bands. I'm kind of curious though, with the changes that are coming in, do you still see, say, that Kindred to be a champion that's deserving of first ban? Like, I know that, that she's strong, and I know that on Mike Ox she's even stronger, but I didn't think she was that strong, worthy of first ban. I think maybe they see something in the match history. It is a, definitely a strong champ, I think, and uh, the bans with that Zillion, uh, 
they kind of go together fairly well too um as you have just the never die comp i guess you call it that you put the zillion chrono shift on and uh the kinder ulti and you're just saving a lot of members from death it gets kind of annoying to play too it's one of my speaks picks that's why i figured they're probably looking for something in in the champion pool that they play I had to ban it away from Mike so he doesn't get that champion. Yeah, it makes sense to ban it away. I just didn't think it was that scary, especially when there is that kind of considered right now Premier Jungler of Rek'Sai available. However, he is going to go ahead and pick that one up. Go ahead. I think at this ELO or at this level of play, um, instead of being pro where they get good at everything, it's people want to more focus on what do these people... Um, are they like main champions, right? That's why we see if like... Steel's playing, you ban Darius. If Box is playing, you're banning Yasuo or Zed. Um, because yeah, those are their main comfort picks. Yeah, exactly. So if you see in their match history that they've been playing a lot of this champion, you're going to want to look to ban that out so that they don't they don't feel comfortable on... They're either forced onto something or they're less comfortable on, to, on or something they haven't been practicing as often. All right. Well, now that we've gotten all of our champions locked in and our players, it's time to run through the picks and bans, ladies and gentlemen, for the side of... Cetra Gaming, our guests for tonight. We've got Toads taking Lissandra in the top lane. Narklas with his Sejuani in the jungle. Kessler with the LeBlanc in the mid lane. CG Indigo taking Ezreal as the 80 carry. And Visual, I love the spelling of that name. Visual taking the pike in the supportive role. And for Team Excellency, we have Experiment 626 playing Jax in the top lane. Mike, Ox, Small Bros, Ox, Small Bros. Playing Rek'Sai in the jungle, Demonius the God playing Orion in the mid lane, Hurricanes playing Jinx AD, Plaz playing Thresh at support. All right, so we've already gotten into our picks, and we've seen those bands coming out as well. We've done a little bit of analysis. Uh, I can start, or you can start. Which team lane do you think is going to have the highest impact in this game? Like just Which team lane lane? specifically. Like okay, so for me. Um, I think that on the side of Excellency, it's going to be heavily about this Jax. How well can Experiment 626 play him in the split push, play him in the side lanes, be able to avoid dying? Because the thing as a split pusher is once you're dead, there's no more pressure in that side lane and the rest of the team could focus on a 5v4. So it's going to be about him not only being able to find pressure in a side lane, but also rotate around, whether it's on the opposite side of the map so his team can go for or say a Drake if he's in the top lane or whether he wants to be on the side with the team say top lane when the team is trying to go to Baron so that he can split away from top lane and meet up at Baron those sorts of things to me that's a critical lane that needs to go well for Excellency because if the Jax doesn't come online and if he's struggling throughout the game their composition identity is going to hurt heavily yeah, I think for Excellency, the three members that I'm looking at specifically are the Jax, Rek'Sai, and Jinx. I think for the for as far as late game goes, the Jax and Jinx are the two members that have to have good positioning and being in the right place at the right times. So they're going to be the late game carries for this team. Um, but the Rek'Sai in the early game is going to be super important for Excellency because if Rek'Sai can find good ganks and good can counteract the pressure that Sejuani can put out and keep his laners from getting super far behind, um, then they'll be in a really good spot because of how well they scale into the late game. If he can get the jacks ahead, I think it's going to be really hard for uh, Setra to do much in this game. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, important for that Rek'Sai side to do well for the lane, help out the laners in the early stages. Right, for the side of Setra Gaming, one of the things I want to keep my eyes on is this Ezreal in the bottom lane. Can he basically farm up well enough that he can pick up that second tier item very early on? The earlier that you can get it, the better. The stronger and faster your power point really comes online. If he can farm super well and play safe against this Thresh and Jinx in the bottom lane, maybe even with the help of Pike pick off a kill or two onto Jinx himself, he could kind of be a potential turning point when it comes to that mid-game level, which we're talking about those types of team fights that they're both going to be looking for. 
The other one that I would see is the Sejuani. We've seen Sejuani's play passively. We've seen Sejuani's play aggressively. I'd love to see her paying attention to this mid lane, trying to help LeBlanc knock down the Orianna, get some early kills, and get LeBlanc popping before we really even hit that mid game. Yeah, I think Sejuani, both junglers, as I talked about with Rek'Sai, Sejuani's in the kind of same boat here, where um, if you can get the snowball rolling on this team, it's going to be really hard again for the other side because they're looking to scale. That Jinx is very squishy, so is the Orianna. And if you can put Jax behind, it, like you said, puts a, throws a wrench into what Ecstasy is trying to run here with their team. Um, so if you can help out that Lissandra, maybe try and look to counter gank the Rek'Sai as Rek'Sai tries to help out get one of these laners ahead. Uh, can definitely, definitely turn the tide for their team and get that snowball going on this LeBlanc and Israel before the late game scaling comes online for the Jinx and the Jax. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, moving directly into the game. Didn't take very long to go through the loading screen. We've got game number one starting us off. Cetra Gaming versus Team Excellency. And boy, does Excellency have their hands full when it comes to the ranking of these players. If you want to throw out a cheer for either team that you're supporting, feel free to drop down below on Twitch. You can use any of those cheer uh, sound clips to cheer the teams on as we switch into game and see where the teams are going to go. And it's looking like we might have a five-man invade from Excellency as they're all going to collect together towards the bottom side. They're going to run straight to the Welcome river to and maybe try to enter the tri brush. And they're going to catch Ezreal, who's able to get there first. He's standing outside of it, though. Okay, there he goes. Throws down a ward. Uh, they won't know this, though. They're going to walk in. They're going to be seen as all five members. There's the cheers coming out. Not sure which team it's cheering for, but I'm going to assume the home team of Excellency. They've been seen. They've been spotted. They know that this is going on. All of Excellency will rotate around. Find no one waiting here around the red buff. Hey, good word there from Ezreal. Um, a lot of times you'll want to just sit in the bush. But you could get caught with that rush, so he decided to opt for the safe play. Oh, I was like, what is this announcement for? Uh, I messed up. I messed up badly. Oh. Go ahead, keep casting. Uh. Give me a second. I messed up because I was trying to bring you back. <laughs> Ignore me. Uh, yeah. Jungle starts. We have both junglers are starting at their red buffs, I believe. Cetra should know this because uh, their bot lane, sh or Excellency's bot lane, showed early into lane, and I think Jax came up to help with the leash. So they should know that he is towards the top side of the map. So do you want to think Raptors will see what they decide to move on to after that, but nothing super exciting. Things on to, oh, they're going to spot it. So Sejuani is going to move towards the scuttle and try and go blue buff, I believe, and because they know that Jack, uh, the Rex I started on his red side, but it's spotted by a word. So actually, he knows having that good vision early in that pixel bush knows where the jungler is going to head to. Yeah, this is some excellent vision from Cetra Gaming. Not only on that bottom side catching the five-man invade, but now just as the word was dying, they caught sight of Rek'Sai heading into that river on the top side too. Hook comes oh, through hook. onto the pike in the bottom lane. He's actually going to dash forward. He can play it backwards as well. Ignite taking away. He's dropping low. Visual has to flash. He's been able to get out, but that is a very costly spell in the bottom lane. And good play with the Jinx uh, traps, choppers, to basically force him to move forward. And then the play from applause backwards. Excellent moves there. He's going to play them both backwards as well. Hold on. They got some damage oh, the out of the Ezreal. The hook comes through. He's got heal. He's got flash. The damage not going to be enough. But so many summoners being burned in this bottom lane from Cetra Gaming. As Jax moves down. That's great pressure. Right. Can't find the stun from Counter-Strike. Go ahead. I like to play while that bot lane fight was happening. Uh, the Lissandra, the top three player members of Team Cetra, tried to find the collapse onto the right size. Uh, she moved into the jungle there, but didn't quite find it. But I like the play. They're all rotating mid lane, even rotated up. But this bot lane from the ex team Excellency is causing a lot of problems for Visual and Indigo. Oh my gosh. Applause with the point blank death sentence. And again, 
Beautiful. Oh. Whoa, hold on. Extreme 66 losing a lot of health on the top side. The counter strike and the dodge out a little bit of damage, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. This code is going to land a lot of auto attacks. Flash forced out. Jack's able to get out. But Lissandra winning that trade on the top side as Castle in the mid lane. Going to be dropped down to about half. Has a Sejuani ganking, though. Can Demonius get out of this situation? Going to be snared up, stun up. Mike Ox around the corner, seeing if he can come in, maybe save his mid laner as the LeBlanc here passes in blood. She's going to get the knock up. Rek'Sai picks up first blood. Now they can turn on to Narcos. The stun comes through the Sejuani, but oh. she's going to not protect Rihanna. The chases her down and picks up a second kill for Team Excellency. Great work in the mid lane. Demonia has played that super well, baiting him in all the way to the end. He didn't even have to use his bearing flash, which he had he had both of those up. But good play from Mike, getting that huge amount of burst damage from the Conqueror Rek'Sai that people have been talking about right at this moment, at this current patch. That champion does so much damage, can proc. I think it's the fastest champion to proc uh, Conqueror. Is more damage on the bot side. Yeah, stun comes through. Beautiful stuff there as the pike is just kind of having to play defensively. This is not what you want from your pike. You want your pike to be able to step forward aggressively, look for the bone skewers, try to land the stuns, setting your AD up for success. Though this time, with great aggression from Applause, Visual is actually having to play defensively and look to save his ADC more than go aggressive. It's an infernal break to start the game. That's going to be happy for whichever team is able to pick that one up first. His toes on the top side gets a little bit of damage down to the Jax, forcing him back once again. By a little, I mean a lot of damage. Look at how chunks that Jax is. He's already been teleported to get back up there. It's going to be in a little bit of trouble, especially if he backs and loses a lot of farm as the hook lands in the bottom lane. The choppers line up perfectly, but they're focused on the pike instead because he's gone aggressive. He does get the bone skewer, forcing a pause to flash away from the turret as Indigo is losing health. Hurricanes tries to get the W. He's now going to have to run. His visual is dealing a lot of damage. Jinx has no oh. mana. Sejuani is coming in. The flash for from Jinx. She knows she's dead. She wants the kill. She gets the rocket. It's a one-for-one -one trade. That is well worth it when you know that no matter what you do, you're going to die. Yeah, I didn't think she think was gonna get it, but uh, Pike E just not, not in time as the auto caught up to him. But good stuff to at least come down to trade that they had the rotations again from the middle lane, trying to find some picks for the LeBlanc. Um, I want to talk about this top lane matchup because what I didn't think about at the start in draft is that Sandra is super strong into this Jax because the fact that the Counter Strike doesn't. Uh, is only for auto attacks, and Lissandra is mostly using her abilities because she is that caster. And as you can see, Experiment is in a tough spot because of how much pressure Lissandra can put onto him. So he's trying to, oh, take a lot of damage. Yeah, that's the ultimate as well, 626. Six. Woohoohoo! Tickle on his back as he walks away for the moment. He's gonna have to recall, and there's a long walk back to the top lane when he's already down over 10 CS to the Lissandra. He seems to be just putting him through the grinder. Join me and be elevated. Oh, thank God, you, Man Rec, for the follow. Let me say that again. M Ma Majin Marek. I appreciate the follow. Glad that you're enjoying the stream as we continue at the seven minute mark to find out which of these two teams is gonna be able to lead us off in game number one tonight. We have a lot of vision around this infernal break. Both teams wanna make sure that they can be the one to pick it up. Give you so much damage. The game progresses. Demonia is using the oh, but it's whiffed! Kessler with a nice distortion gets out of harm's way. Escaping that. Wait, hold on, the damage to Moriana is still coming through. Will back away as the passive is popped from LeBlanc and a nice sidestep from Visual to avoid the death sentence from Thresh. Good stuff there in the mid lane. Still down uh, some CS. You're gonna try and get the one back, but across the board, the lane that's winning in CS is that top lane Lissandra having so much pressure, but the, the lanes of Excellency are doing very well for themselves. Mid lane has that advantage. Bot lane having that advantage as well, almost 20 CS now. Uh, actually, 20 CS in that bottom lane. So, Juani in the top of that. He's going to be trying to gank on this Jax. He's going to start the counter strike, but it's really early, so he's not going to be able to hold on with the leap strike. Get out. He's stunned up. He's trying to save it. Hops to the minions. That was so wise and forward thinking. Wait for the sun to come through. 
then hop afterwards, though his instinct was to immediately jump to the board. Good play. As the infernal blade can be started up by Excellency, knowing this is drawing to the top side. Pike in position for a bone skewer, trying to land it. LeBlanc goes over the wall, can't steal it away. Nice smite from Rek'Sai. We'll make sure they can skewer the infernal Drake as they move on to Indigo, getting the knockup. Mike Ox takes a huge chunk of help. In the top lane, oh. the devil man gang, but Narcus oh, the, the turret. The heal comes through, the triumph keeps the jacks alive as Lissandra has to walk away. Lantern saves Hurricane as well. Excellent. Let's see, what are you doing? Are you just going God mode right now? I 66 got away super lucky in that. I thought they were going to have it, but Sejuani is only level 5, so it doesn't have that Glacial Prison available and gets out by his kid in his teeth when he goes for us. Yes. Toads <laughs> really wanting this kill so badly. He's lost it again and again. This time, still gonna allow the Jax to escape as the ultimate has already been used. Flash has been burned. Both teleports are down. Jax will come up earlier, but he's still gonna walk back to lane. He's still down CS, so it's not like he's just turned the whole fight around the top side, but he got himself a kill, and that's keeping him pretty even with Lissandra for now. Yeah, he's not doing too bad for himself. It is a tough matchup. Um, let me check the gold real quick. He's still down a little bit of gold because of that CS advantage, but it could be a lot worse. He has gotten really close to death a few times, so keeping himself alive is very important. And I'm interested to see if the Sejuani, after that blundered top dive, is going to try and keep coming to that top side. I think if he starts to relieve that pressure, it's just going to become super hard for this Lissandra to do much eventually as Jack will start to get some items, get some magic resistance under his belt. Um, We'll definitely interested to see where this is when he decides to put his precious demotes. Absolutely chunks to LeBlanc. Yeah, Kessler having to hop away, maybe going back to the fountain, sitting at a quarter health in the mid lane. Sejuani is around the corner, but wanting to play it safe, will back, and that is going to give Demonius a bit more time on the spirit. Kessler still hopping forward. Whoa! Baits out the ultimate from Demonius. And whoa, the Jinx ult comes through as well. They were actually planning for that. It will miss, so the LeBlanc gets back. However, she's going to go ahead and recall. So, you know what? You know what? It's not worth it. It's, it's really not worth it. But that's still more plates over to this Orianna. She's going to be picking up a third plate in the mid lane. Already winning on the farm. 30 farm up over this LeBlanc. Orianna's feeling really good as Hurricanes in the mid lane. Gets dumped on by the Pike. It's going to be dropped below, but no, it's the Pike that actually gets bursted down first. Applause can't go down because there's a shield in the way. In the top side, is Fairy sits 2 6. Is he smurfing? Will he finally go down? The counter strike a little bit late. Leap strike trying to flash forward. He does not get the kill. A great use of that Hextech Proto Belt as well as the Sejuani to finish off the kill on the 66. Finally drop him low, but everywhere else on the map, that Excellency is winning as Kessler in this mid lane drops the Ignite. Demonius, knowing this Orianna has low mana, so she will burn. The <laughs> barrier flash forward for the auto attack. Finish off Kessler. Great play, but it, what is it traded for? This top lane dropping down to one plate. They're gonna back away. The bottom side turret gonna drop down to two plates. Is Hurricanes and Applause gonna stick on it? Pike and Ezreal. Maybe looking to see if they can make a play. Pike's gonna jump forward, flashes in, looking for the jinx. Dropping her to about half health with a play from the Thresh. Keeps her alive for now. He's gonna oh dropping Jinx low. She is going to fall. Indigo picks up one and now oh, auto. slow. Walk this one in, picking up a second as well. And man, etc. Gaming strikes back. Hey, yeah, good stuff turning it back around. They got I, they actually brought the pressure back up to the top side stage when it wasn't dissuaded by that failed dive attempt and got the kill onto the Jax. Uh, as well as trying to bring that back in the favor of Lissandra. Um, and the bottom side doing really well for himself. Uh, punishing a little bit of over-aggression from Hurricanes and Applause. And picking out a double kill for this Ezreal. Going to do himself really well. He's sitting on 2,200 gold on this next back. So he's going to be in a very good spot when he gets back to base. Alright, checking a look at this CS. Even if the CS is not the greatest that you want to see, when you look at that Jinx being 20 farm over this Ezreal, he's got two kills and no death, so there's no slouch. He's coming 6 2 6. He's gonna be joined by Demonius up in the top side. Shockwave pulls Lissandra back. She might have to ult herself. She tries, witness. but I don't think it goes through. She might have altered the Jax instead, as she is going to fall. Mike Ox Bro throws down the ultimate. The flash from Lissandra. 
no oh. way. Dark Passage is about. And the Jinx Rocket to finish up the Sejuani. Are you kidding me? Hurricane picks up a third kill. Thank you, Jobo the Hut, for the follow. I appreciate that as the second turret of the game goes over to Team Excellency. Before that last, the earlier fight, Demonis is just starting to take over this game, honestly. He's now 3-0. and He's crushing it in the mid lane and bringing that advantage to the top side. Help get the Jax ahead of this. Sandra picks up the kill there. And then on the bot side, Jinx sniping away that kill on the Sejuani. I thought he was going to get out alive with that one. And then Jinx Rocket comes out of nowhere. And they get the first turret of the game. Plus a second turret with the mid lane one. Oh, he got stolen! Oh, Pike steals it away with the bone skewer. That is so clutch, my god. Join me almost and be health, elevated. Unable to secure it. Oh, as Billy Willard goodness. also going to follow. Appreciate all these follows, guys. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Infernal Drake for Infernal Drake. It's evened up between the two teams. 5,000 gold lead for excellency, though. All those are doing well. Applause in the bottom lane. Dropping low the ult from Pike oh. and Indigo. Steals away his third kill, but Jake says, I'll get one right back. And now it's an ADC versus ADC fight. And just kidding, they say, you know what, we're gonna go back to farming instead because farming is number one in League of Legends. That was a good play there from the pike, but I think underestimated a little bit of the damage from that Thresh died to the Ignite, I believe, plus the damage from the box. Oh, it's Demonis, back top side! Oh, the so shockwave! Ariana comes in, drops the shockwave, pulls Lissandra back, she's going to fall. If you would actually pause for just a second, I think you're about a second ahead of me, and I don't want to screw around too okay. much with my own side. Uh, just really quick, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Okay, we're good. Okay, perfect. Uh, cool. So, situation. 10 kills to 5 excellency. Up pretty well. Definitely going to be laying a lot of the carry boots onto Demonius the God and this Orianna. He's done a fantastic job sitting on an 800 bounty. Next target is going to be their Swift Herald, so you can see them already stepping forward, trying to place vision around it. They've got double control wards up here, a couple extra vision as well. I think it's triple, actually, <laughs> with the subscribers on the top side as well. Uh, the ward battles there with the pike. Clears one ward and then Thresh puts down another one immediately in the same spot. Oh, that's but what you do. I thought it was interesting. I was gonna say, go. that's why Riot gives you three wards, is so that you can just keep popping them on the same spot after people keep trying to clear them away. Though, Control Ward does beat that because you don't have to use Scrying Orb anymore. And you're like, oh, sad day. All right, fine, you win. <laughs> I thought I didn't really talk about Demonius too much in this game, especially when we're in that draft. Uh, prioritize the jungle matchup and then the top and a bot laner for Team XC, but I kind of expected him to play safe into a LeBlanc lane, but he took over this lane, got the CS advantage, and then with the help of Mike, got the early kill onto the LeBlanc, and then just took over his lane, and now is translating, translating that into the top side. Shockwave comes down again. Pops a passive. Does he know which one's the right one? Doesn't matter. He's gonna finish it off anyway. He could have his field day in the mid lane. Now 5-0, and oh, 20 CS up over this LeBlanc. Just crushing her. Sejuani gonna be the target. Rek'Sai hops over the wall. Gets the knockup. Thresh and Orianna are here. They're gonna try to chase it down. Zap used by the Jake plus the rocket. They're gonna secure one more onto the Sejuani. She's gonna follow Blossom, oh. the one who steals it away, making sure that the, everyone on the team gets a couple of kills as Trimmy626 is enjoying this split push on the bottom side. However, he needs to be a bit safe because he has lost some pretty ch good chunk of health against Lissandra in the 1v1. Good stuff for Mike on that Void Rush. Actually dodged the uh, Ezreal ultimate, I believe, that would have killed him. The true shot rush. Uh, oh, it's Flash Hook on Ezreal! On the Ezreal, catches him, plays him backwards as well. Straight into the jumpers. He's able to flash away oh. the tower shot will take down the Thresh. So a good attempt, but the uh, chompers from the Jinx a little bit mispositioned. Ezreal able to jump away to safety and a nice bone skewer from the pike. This kid fell onto a flaws. Good stuff from Pike to turn that one back around and start. Go for it. No, I was gonna say, sorry, I'm kinda taking over your role. I'm used to solo casting from last time. Oh, weekend. it's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> You're good. I'm just trying to fill in where I can. You're doing a fantastic job as always. So, looking at the items at the moment, we've got one completed item for most members, moving into a second completed item for a few. Infinity Edge, Luden Zeko, completed by the carries for Team Excellency. On the opposite side, that LeBlanc 0-3 still hasn't completed anything other than a lost chapter. No Marilla Namacon yet for her. Ezreal finished his first item and a half. Or I guess really two items, I just want to got a man in here, but he needs to start that second tier item to really start to pop off on that damage. 
Okay, he's still got a little bit to go. He's close to getting that tier fully stacked. Demodius. Oh, in the mid lane, I take a lot of damage. Oh, that takes away the trap, but doesn't save him. The shield from the Thresh a little bit too late. Great pop from Kessler. I think that was a little bit good stuff there, punishing the overaggression, because Demoni still had his barrier and his flash. He just opted not to use it. I think he kind of forgot that he had his barrier up. Maybe it wasn't up at the time, but I ticked him down. Good stuff for Kessler, picking up that kill, gets that shutdown. As you said, 950 gold over to him and finishing up his first item. So he's going to start being able to do some more damage in these team fights. Something to keep your eyes on. Israx I still has that Rift Herald off to the side. It's about halfway through its timer. Excellency going to pressure onto the second tier turret as the Infernal Drake is going to be started up by Cetra Gaming. They've left Toad here to try to defend his Jax is looking on top side. Either way, they're going to get one turret. They might get two as well. Dark Passage dropped Infernal Drake was secured by Excellency. So they definitely, sorry, Cetra Gaming. So they definitely wanted this one. The Black oh. Toad wants this Jinx. Gets this snap. Toad should be gone. Wow. And by Toads, I definitely mean a Hurricanes gets dropped. The flaw's gonna be in trouble as Kessler steps forward. They find the binding, they find the engage visual. We'll secure another one for Cetra Gaming, and they're doing a good job of grouping and punishing Excellency on their slow uh, retreat from that mid lane where they didn't even get the turret. Hurricanes is Toad's dead here. Ah, <laughs> uh, hey, you're doing dead puns too. I love it. <laughs> I brought it out. It's like Wraith is here anyway. Oh, it's beautiful. As the Cetra team will set forward, Shockwave will whip completely. My gosh, we just the knock as the Lissandra goes golden with golden stopwatch. Ezra is going to pass through everybody. Experiment 626 doing what he can. Play that front line. Getting Nar class low. Can they take some chunks down this Sejuani? She's on a big, but she's still going to be served up like ham. Will be dropped as Kessler's over the corner looking to oh jump in. Oh my goodness. Another auto attack will finish him off. The flash from Kessler is just a distortion to get over the wall and escape away from the, I believe that was Jack trying to chase that one in. As the Reptile's gonna respond in the mid lane, he's gonna be able to walk forward and at least get one charge off, should take down the second tier turn mid lane. On and the then turn onto Baron, Excellency! Immediately say, you're gonna have to clear that. You've got two members coming up slowly, let's get Baron. I don't think really LeBlanc gets top this. It's already down to 3K, down to 2K. It should oh, be going over to them. Oh, the he's over. Oh. No, the Rek'Sai will secure it with a beautiful, beautiful smite as Kessler ignited, running away, dropping low distortion to get out. And Zap was so close for Jinx. Everyone throwing out their longest range spells will all miss. So LeBlanc lives. But Baron for all five members of Team Excellency. It looked like it was going to be a good setup for uh, Cetra there as they got the pick onto the Jinx was the good play, the card control that we talked about before from the Lissandra and Sejuani and the damage output that they can bring with the LeBlanc and the Ezreal. But uh, XTC turned that around, getting that good counter engages LeBlanc, wasn't there to help team fight, got the kill on a Toads early with the CC from the Rek'Sai and the Jax. Even without the shockwave you saw there, they still had enough damage to just melt through this team and got a couple kills for himself at the end of that. And it's definitely going to be really hard for um, for Cetra to try and team fight. They have to look for those picks like they found onto the Jinx, but then have to play very carefully because of how strong this Orianna is right now, how much damage she can actually put out. Yeah, it's insane how much she was chunking that Ezreal for. You give her a moment with that orb, she's just going to make you regret not having uh, tank tanks on your team besides this Sejuani. She's only got a Warmog, that's not much magic resist, as members from Excellency will be grouping in this bottom side. It's time to split push. Four members to the bottom side as 66 is the only one at the top side. No one here to defend the bottom lane turret as the wave is just pushing and Baron above minions. That's another exterior turret down. That's more gold to Team Excellency. They're pushing 8,000 gold lead and looking for their first inhibitor of the game. They're going to start the siege on this bottom lane inhibitor turret. Yeah, they're, they're mover, maneuvering around the map very well. Um, and understanding that this 1v1 is in the favor of Jax right now because if he has that Hex Drinker and the Merc Tide's completed, oh, he has enough magic to herself as Jax is still going to jump in with the Leap Strike, but he takes a couple of turret shots on his way out, so he's not going to be going in anytime just yet. His pipe breaks out on the bottom side. Flay will pull Pike in. Shockwave catches out. This is Wani. He's going to lose a bit of health. Arcane 
but then Ezreal ultimate only going to land oh, on LeBlanc. the one, but LeBlanc pops the threat, she's gone, but it's in a trade for their own support, oh. and the rocket almost drops, oh, yes, it does the burn, but the red buff takes the Sidwani down, that's two cleaned up on the bottom side, Lissandra has joined the fight, as 626 is freely pushing the top side, taking up that second tier turret up there, as Indigo's losing health, the knife zap from her, he drops it low, Rex, I will jump forward with the ultimate, will lose his own life in trade, but it's all for the turret damage, dropping it low, under 100 health, as Jax is now moving on to an inhibitor turn on the top side. There's still Baron buffs as Kessel jumps forward. Demonius trying to oh. outplay, but the barrier again doesn't come through from Demonius, so he's going to be dropped. Hurricane's in trouble. Jinx should go down. Toast chases it in, making it a complete four for, I believe, two in the end. Even more, punishing that overaggression again from I actually see getting some of this shots on gold on some stuff. They're still down in gold, but the shots on gold is going over to some priority targets, especially that Le LeBlanc is getting more gold for stuff as getting another kill onto the Orianna and punishing the over aggression. I think they got shots on gold for the Rek'Sai as well. Let me check. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. So Ezreal got 450 gold there too. So they got gold on the carries of this team, which is going to help them quite a bit coming into the later stages. If this Ezreal can get some more of those items, he has his second tier stacking currently. Looking on to the next dragon. It's a win Drake started up and should be secured by that for gaming without too much trouble. No one really here from Exxon C to try to stop this. Keep in mind though, despite where they were, 8,000 gold up and now about 7,000 gold difference separating these two teams. Top lane and bottom lane turrets, inhibitor turrets, are both just a couple of auto attacks away from being cleaned up by the side of Team Excellency. You give Jax even a couple of seconds on one of those turrets, he'll be moving on to the inhibitor next, as a Baron might be the next target for both these teams coming up in about a minute 40. I still think it's tough for Satra here, even though they have won a couple of these fights. Uh, they got, have been getting out maneuvered around the map currently, and if, like you said, that Jax gets some alone time, he's gonna take your turrets and a lot more of your base, and even the, uh, the rest of the team managed to maneuver around the map, get that bot outer turret without having anybody there to defend, and only had some defense at the inhibitor turret after they almost take took it down already. So if they can look to do the same stuff, keep Jackson Willie sidelines into that 1v1 matchup against Lissandra, he's now getting super strong and super hard for anybody on their team to deal with. As a match, try to fight and pick here. 6-2-6, six, six, gonna be in trouble. Joe chasing it in. Ultimate from Sejuani, ultimate from Ezra, ultimate's burn. Can 6 2 six escape? He's got his team showing up to defend. Thresh throwing out a fishing line, seeing what he might be able to reel in. Doesn't get much with it, though. So they will they back away, but they save the Jacks. They went for the pick onto the Jacks, but didn't layer their CC properly. They just kind of stacked them together, which it doesn't double stun. They just get stunned for the same amount of time. So the... Glacial Prison coming out just after the Frozen Tomb came out from Lissandra and didn't really add much effect as Kessler gets taken to blow. Loses about half health. Watch for the Orianna Shockwave. That's oh. what you want to see. That's what you want to know. Here comes the teleport in from Jax on to the bottom side. The Lissandra going to go ahead and go golden, but she's going to be dropped low as Mike Oxbrose goes golden himself, but he's way deep in enemy territory. Ezreal should be able to finish off the last auto attack. So it's a one for one trade. Shockwave! They the pike and Shockwave on two as Excellency will clean up the fight. They will come out into the lead. They don't even need the Baron. They're going to freely push now. Kessler in trouble having to run away from Experience 626, who's just continuing to keep this LeBlanc from backing. Top lane turret gonna fall to Jinx at this point. With two and a half items completed, she will tear through this top lane, secure an inhibitor, back away, and now they can oh, look for Baron. Still chasing the LeBlanc. Still keeping the LeBlanc from backing. That was really well played from Team Excellency as uh, Toads teleported in, but didn't have that Frozen Tomb available, so he wasn't able to ult himself for a lot of damage onto their back the back side of that fight. I would just focus down as soon as he came out of that Sopwat or the Zonias. Oh, it's Kessler. Oh, Kessler got on the damage. nice pop on the Jinx. Down under a hundred health. LeBlanc is still dangerous and deadly. Secures Hurricanes, drops that one. So even if they were to go for the Baron, oh my goodness. it's gonna be a lot slower to try to pick that one up without that sustained damage. As Narclass gonna hop over a wall, try to chase him maybe onto Demonius. He's got low mana, grabs the Dark Passage for Thresh to get out. And they move away, but now this is allowing the members of Cetra Gaming to set up around Baron if they so choose. Orion just so much damage left under there with one QW. Uh, brought her, I think, to just above half HP there with one combo. It is not looking good for Cetra as this Oriana is so strong and keeps 
getting stronger after these team fights had that super nice shockwave at the end of that last fight to catch both the bot laners for Cetra. But I think the one thing to note is Cetra, earlier in the game I was going to talk about how their vision was a little lacking at the start, but they've done really well, really well around this Baron pit. Um, they've got some really good vision down to know if XC does decide to start this up, as Applause is going to try and clear some of that away with the help of the team. Which I'm actually finding most of it. The good stuff there from Excellency to clear out that vision force um, them into a rough situation. Well, they have if to. They decide choose. to try and gawk in there. There's the Superman switching to the top side, which isn't as dangerous as a bottom inhibitor being down, but even still, it's something to keep your eyes on. And Excellency will probably play around it, wait for the Super Minions to crash, or somebody to try to go. Ooh, way as Kessler was coming back from the distortion. That death sentence from Applause was deceptively close. Won't land though, so they will walk away. I want to check very quickly as the fight's about to break out. It's a Windrake to start up next. And neither team rushing for that one just yet. It's hard to throw the rush onto the Baron though. Let's see what the team decides to run forward. True shot barrage from the Ezreal. Just going to cleave through a bunch of people. Drop that Rex side down just a little bit as the bow are going to land. Yeah, Zijuani is overlooked. She's in the pit. She's alone. She flashes away. Jax is going to chase in. Hop over the wall. Kessler as well. Looking for the pop. Oh, plus. Applause. The Thresh is going to fall. And everyone has hopped out of the Baron pit. Demonius around the side. But everyone is losing their health. As Kessler, Kessler. popping them left, right, and center. Hurricane's going to be dropped under about half. And so Excellency has to call the fight off. Cetra not going to run for the Baron just yet. Jinx Rocket only going to land on the Ezreal, but that only tickles him. Wait, are they going to turn right back onto the Baron as the members of Cetra Gaming look like they're about to recall? Two do. The other three are going to... Oh, on the Demonius! Bone Skewer finds Demonius. The Barrier's not going to save him this time, as he hasn't even used it before. Visual Gaming comes up huge with a pick. Death from below goes right through their shield, says, your bear doesn't matter, I'm killing you anyway, and they're starting the Baron for themselves as the mid lane mage is taken out of the game. Well, the Baron's gonna be started up, Baron's gonna be dropped to about half, as Hurricane's throwing out those rockets over the wall, but needs to be safe. Needs to not get hooked by visual gaming, because Kessler's gonna put oh, the for the pop, and that is not gonna save Hurricane. Tries to use the Quicksilver Sash to escape. Experiment 66 actually drops Kessler low with a little bit of extra damage. Does get out um, for the moment. And the Plaws still over the wall, throwing out a little bit of damage. Mycox as well, looking for the moment to jump oh. in. Two members done up, but the Baron is still ticking away. Under 800 health. Oh Ooh, my god! Rexai gets it! Has to get out, throws out the ultimate, immediately grabs the Dark Passes from the Thresh. Excellency secure a second Baron to the game, but it costed them heavily to do so. They lost a lot in both of those fights, but it did go over to three members of um, Team Ecstasy as Simonis just respawned. That was so clutch from Mike there. If they lost to Baron, it'll, it's going to start looking really difficult. Uh, the comeback is definitely still real, but that would have swayed this game into Cetra's favor for sure if they got some of those turrets. But man, Mike clutching that one out, getting the steal for the team. I think Sejuani still had that ulti, or still had Smite available, but stealing that one away is definitely going to help them. Well, and I think it might have saved their lead there too. On top of that, they have a Nexus turret that went down because of those super minions. So not only were they playing around the Baron, not only were they fighting for it, but they were also trying to delay all of the backing from Cetra Gaming so that they could use the super minion pressure they had picked up earlier onto that inhibitor turret. And the Nexus turret, so they get one. Inhibitor has to respawn to the top side, so there's a little bit of a reset of the map as both teams are going to be looking around the wind. Drake, they're going to start off with the 20, so that's 20. a lot of damage. And Arcot's going to use the board rush for his game. The Arctic Rush, I believe it actually is called, as Mike Rush doing what he can. The Thresh is taking everything. Drops. Let's see what the Thresh sacrifice is going to be worth as it's going to be a one for one at the moment. The support for Jungler, though. They knocked down. Wait, and this is also a 4v5 as Jax is still pushing on the top side. Demonius is going to join Hurricanes, pushing in these super Baron up minions on the bottom side as they're the ones. This Oriana still has that Baron. Rek'Sai does as well. Jax is pushing on the top side without Baron up minions, but he's onto the inhibitor. I've said too. They played this super well. This Jax able to get out and not lose anything for it. Us. 
Oh, Mike Rexite is too. baits out the pike ultimate. There's no one else there. 626 might lose his life, but it's all a sacrificial play because the bottom side Excellency is winning everything. They take down the inhibitor turret. They take the inhibitor as well. Pike's going to fall, and that is going to secure themselves again. One inhibitor, but even alive. more gold. And 626 manages to escape on top of it all, and they could turn oh. onto the Windrake. Pick that one up as Kessler is going to be jumped on. Uh, Counter-Strike stuns a oh. little long, but still has the pop. I think the moment hesitation from Jax when her passive came out led to his demise even though he picked the right target afterwards rough stuff still Windrake secured for excellent sees it oh, and the Lissandra should be have take down Demonius his barrier the way allows him to walk away Demonius gets out that would that would have been super big for them to pick up that kill there but not going to be able to find it English president is back on cooldown again Bought that barrier that time, kept him alive, got him out of that fight. Good stuff overall from X and C. They were playing the map super well, forcing uh, Cetra to make plays that they don't want to have to make and giving up a lot for it. Used cooldowns in that top side and didn't actually find the kill onto the Jax. And then in the bot side, ended up losing both Pike and their inhibitor turret and their inhibitor. So Without goal. getting any kills for it. Oh, the hook! Oh, Hurricane's in trouble. Should go down. Oh, the pop between the LeBlanc and the Pike is just too much. Hurricane's just gets wiped in 4v5. Then mine has Jack. Shockwave missed! Shockwave misses as well. Excellency, are you trolling? Kessler's got the double buffs as well. Rex is going to all keep it to do. Secures one. We'll turn on to Indigo, dropping the Ezreal low. They're putting all of their faith into this Jax and into this Rex side. As the Juana's taking up, finds his son on the direction. He gets the CC, though, holds the Sandra in place. And can now get the play back onto the 20 as well. Drop Narcolus. He's going to fall. The Pike, the only one left alive. And I'm sorry, but you can do a lot of Spike. You can't defend against four members freely pushing your mid lane. I think they might just trigger to the bot side and try to end the game here as they still have the inhibitor down. I believe it's what they're going to go for. There's 30 seconds on, 20 seconds on Ezreal and LeBlanc coming up soon, but they should have enough damage with this Jax. He's still full HP. They're going to move in as four members. They've got a very small wave here with one Siege minion, but a second Siege minion following up shortly behind. Visual trying to do what he can, but the Nexus turret is already is. gone. Nexus is left. Still everyone for the side of Cetra Gaming sitting in the respawn timers. Going to watch their Nexus explode. His Excellency fought long, fought hard, and were able to come out with a success in the end of game number one. Good stuff from Exley all around. Had a couple scary moments towards the end there, but did well to close that one out eventually. But it was a fun game to watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fun moments. Last. And so many good plays, especially what we were talking about with when they played, Team Excellency played to their advantages. Having 626 splitting in a side lane, allowing the rest of the team to kind of focus on, you know, moving around the objectives, getting the vision, all that sort of stuff. It was good for them. However, a couple of times it didn't really play to that. 626, things were getting a little bit sketchy between him and Toads in the early and early portion of the mid game. But in the end, they successfully make some sweet plays, pushing in mid, and then immediately, I think they dropped the Rift Herald mid lane, and immediately turned and burned down a Baron, which gave them a small advantage. And then they fought for vision, fought for vision. Rek'Sai stole the Baron when it looked like things were about to swap over really terribly, and Excellency comes in with the win. Uh, do you want to roll through MVPs and honorable mentions? Sure, for Cetra, uh, the losing team. Honorable mention going over to... I'm going to give it to Kessler, actually. I think Kessler played really... Had a rough early game into Demones. Had that early kill where Mike helped out um, giving that kill over to Demones, I believe. And then had I think he got solo killed as well. But he did turn that around and started doing so much damage. Getting the picks where he could. Picking off Hurricanes a few times. Um, found that kill on the 66 eventually as he ran away. MVP for me is going to be Indigo. Um, had a slightly rough early game as well, but found that double kill, got him back into the game, and did, I think he did the most damage in the game, or second most second most damage in the game by about 100 on of Demonius, but did really well for his team. Um, I didn't be able to find some picks. I think the Jax late game kind of took over. Uh, 
didn't show in the score there, but for the side of Excellency, honorable mention, it's got to go. I think it's going to go to Mike just because of that Baron Seal. I think saved, kept their kept their lead and allowed them to close out the game with the Baron Minions. Got them that inhibitor turret in the bot side and uh, Jackson in the top side. And then uh, Demonius is going to get MVP for sure. 13, 3, and 8. S took over his lane with the help of Mike from that gank and then just started steamrolling the game. Got advantages in the top side to help 66 out because he was getting had some struggles in the early with the Sejuani coming top, even though he did get that kill underneath the turret. But yeah, Demonius doing really well for his team. All right. Just to double check, you said honorable mention to who for Team Excellency? Mike. Hawk small bros Mike for the Baron Steel. Bro. That was fantastic. Some of those high pressure moments when you got to have a cool head and you got to be ready to make the play that could save the game. Mike Hawk Sproul's definitely there. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with game number two coming up here in just a moment. Eyes on us versus gross incompetence. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be a Focus Esports special game. We'll be right back. Do we have a dog break? I think she's sleeping though. 